Heidi Ho, Arkansas Pilgrim here again, out in the garden, spending a lot of time here lately. Yeah, I've been spending a lot more time out here. I've been coming out every night. Uh, I'd said it before, back when I was doing Shed Wars, that, hey, you know, if you've got a garden, you've got to make it a priority. And uh, since I've been making this one a priority, it sure is doing a lot better than it was last year. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've got all that compost down and the chips on top of it and help helping keep the soil moist. But I've also been out here a lot and doing some fertilizing or pulling weeds or you know adding more chips and you know, adding more compost or and watering more often and this is just kind of relearning gardening almost because i i did uh, successful gardening before and um, when i had some planter beds and stuff i've mentioned that before but uh there's nothing substitutes for spending some time doing things. What I'm going to be doing now is treating for tomato hornworms that have started to show up on the tomatoes. I've been keeping them pulled off, uh, catching them really early, and also going to be treating for squash vine borers. Haven't seen any of those yet either. And what I'm going to be using is a biological insecticide called BT, or Bacillus thuringiensis for short. It's a biological insecticide. It's basically a bacteria. Uh, I don't know much about it. You can go online and read it. Look up, uh, you know, look up BT biological insecticide. I just got this. Um, you know, I've been mentioning like maybe I'm going to have to use uh, uh, Seven Dust on this. Well, I'm not. I ordered this online, got it in a couple days. Took advantage of one of those they offer you yeah, Amazon Prime for 30 days for free. So hey, I got it shipped really quick. Well, I'm going to mix up. Well, the instructions say uh, that you should use it all up in, uh, use up whatever you mix up within 24 hours. And so I'm probably going to mix up a couple times. I'm just going to start off with a quart. And it says an ounce and a half per gallon. To mix up. And it actually also points out that that's one tablespoon per gallon. It's, you know, two tablespoons per an ounce, eight ounces in a cup, well, two tablespoons in an ounce, that means each tablespoon's a half ounce. Well, I'm gonna mix up a quart, well, one, one fourth of, uh, let's see, it's, geez, here you go, more math. A teaspoon is, or a tablespoon is three teaspoons, so if I need one, four, uh, one fourth of that, that's three quarters of a teaspoon. So, hey, here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. Put it in here and then add some water. Actually, does this? Oh yeah, it's got some markings on there. Not for a quart, but it's close enough. This isn't rocket science. Oh yeah, it's gonna have. Okay. Three quarters of a teaspoon. That'll be. They don't make three quarters of a teaspoon, so. Gonna be okay. All right now I'm gonna go add some water to this. Okay, got the water turned on. Just gonna put this on mist first and get the it all over everything probably got on the camera too trying to just rinse off the what got onto the threads there and what's on the stuck to the thing. go ahead and change it to shower there we go try not to foam it up too much and that's Looks like about, that says half gallon, so that'll be a quart. See how it goes. All right, 
here it goes. Uh, hopefully this is camera's pointed right because the uh, it's hard to see when uh, so much light reflects off the screen. It says, it says coat under and under and on top of the leaves. To be honest with you, I think I'm gonna work for the back and get underneath first because underneath is all where I always find. Hornworms. Yeah. Underneath first, and then come back and do on on top. One good thing about this, at least that's what they say, is that it's like you can put it on right before you harvest. I guess it rinses off really well, and it's also it it doesn't it. Oh hey, there we go. See him right there. Well, well, actually, I'm gonna use the old bashing method on him because it takes a while for him to die. So, see how small he was? That's because I've been getting out here. I picked up. Uh, I've taken some off that were almost too small to see. They were. They were. I, I mean, like hate to use the oh there's one here some place look see that there's there's leaves been eaten there's one on that plant I'm gonna stop spraying and check that plant out and see if I can find him yep there he is see how big he is I think he got that big because this morning I wasn't able to come out and and check the uh, check the plants Die, vermin. Anyway, um, I've been coming out every evening and every morning and looking for the worms. I wasn't able to come out this morning, and here we go. We got one that was that big. That's one of the that's one of the biggest ones I've seen on here so far. I've been catching them when they're small. But hey, with this spray, that's gonna make. I'm hoping it's gonna make a big difference. And then once the dill comes up, if it does. Uh, that'll help too, but I'm going to be using this spray for sure. Continue using it. Okay, I got everything sprayed now. Actually, I mixed up another half a half gallon, two quarts, and I got the rest of the of the the tomatoes, all of the, the Roma tomatoes. There's a lot more leaves on those. They're a lot bushier, and it took twice as much. And I mixed up just a little bit more and got sprayed the the uh, squash because it's supposed to work on squash fire borders too. So. Anyway, but back over here, you know, this was that, uh, there's that leaf, or that, that stem that had the leaves chewed off. That's how you know, you know, you've got a, a hornworm around someplace. I mean, well, what you, when you find and kill your hornworm, what you also need to do is cut off whatever they've chewed on. Because that way, That way, there's you can always tell if there's fresh chewed on leaves and you'll know to look for a worm. If you leave stuff there, you don't know whether it was old or new um, damage. So, and it's also a good idea, and sometimes it feels weird trimming, but when, you, when you've got tomato plants, you need to trim everything that's low hanging that might touch the ground because tomato plants get disease really easy. But, uh, and you also want to cut off anything that starts looking just nasty and weak because it's not helping the plant and it may actually be harming it because it's got this, it's a, I'm not exactly sure if this is true, but because the leaf's no good, the plant may be trying to feed it and it's just wasting energy which you want to go into the rest of the plant. And unless you just totally cut off everything, you shouldn't hurt the plant. So like here, here is a, uh, see this nasty looking thing. It's, um, there. That's no good. So, yeah. Yeah, another reason to uh, uh, to prune tomatoes is if you got uh, leaves that are going out that, that are like almost never in the sun, uh, those will just be a load on the plant too. I'm going back looking for those. Here's one that's kind of like that, but it's also kind of 
and not all that good looking either. It's got spots and stuff on it. And you don't want to, I'm going to pile it up right here for now and then throw them away since I'm filming, but you don't want to uh, uh, compost your tomato plants because they, they, they catch diseases real easy. You always just want to get rid of them. So, um, actually these are really low too. They're not going to do any good. Uh, and you know, once you learn to start pruning, you, you know, it, you, the, the fear of doing it goes away. Um, so, actually, you do have to be careful and make sure you don't cut the wrong thing. Um, let's see, I'm getting, getting all these low hanging ones because they don't, they're eventually going to, eventually going to drag the ground, so I might as well get rid of them now. Anyway, I guess that's enough for tonight. That's all I'm going to be doing. I'll be going grabbing some more wood chips to spread around, but you know, that's not interesting to watch. And actually, it's arguable whether this has been interesting to watch either. But anyway, thanks for coming along. God bless y'all. See you next time.